All right. Okay. Morning. Good morning, everybody in the cryptoverse. I was just saying to Scott, who doesn't feel great to be in crypto right now? We fucking told you. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. It's like I once you'd gone through bonk and a cock in you you thought there can't be there can't be another one with a ridiculous name that also i honestly is. didn't i honestly didn't think the lightning would start, strike twice but I, I once again i've I overestimated the intelligence of crypto traders so it seems like these memes are like fucking nuts um you want to go first Ian? um i'm before i before i tell everyone my retarded opinions i'm i'm, I'm probably interested in yours first Yes, excuse me. So I've got one on the market cap and then one on Bitcoin. So I'm, I'm now far less reliant on what has happened in the past as an indicator for the future. But if we just look at the history, like 2021, we had the pre-halving rally, we had the pre-halving retrace, then we had the COVID cock punch. So this, I think, is a bit COVID of a... Cock punch was the, COVID, cock, cock, COVID cock punch was first. It was, it was the thing, the black... On the far left of your chart. There we go. Why 2020, March 2020. March 2020. Oh, okay. Well, I got me wrong date. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we got that. We got that huge. So if we go to today, right, and we look at the breakout and we look at these levels of resistance, the reason that I brought these up is because as we approach this level of resistance and most likely break it, there's generally a retest of it. So my thinking is, is that once we get into this line i need to see what happens that's when i maybe that's when i start to get a little bit more cautious maybe thinking that we're okay I'm, uh, I'm i'm a little bit uh, uh i'm going to take a different view here I, I i think we can't read nearly anything into the previous history just because it's changed so much and people have so much expectation based on what happened before I, I think what we're seeing now is that the, the broad strokes will be the same. So the broad strokes is when retail people, when your friends who have nothing to do with crypto, who when your friends who think crypto is a scam now start calling you up, asking you about XRP, that's probably like two weeks from the end, right? Yeah. Of that round. I reckon. We're not at the stage where everyone's fall in like if i look at like our marketing team our copywriting team they've only just launched, launched finrep like that like i told them for for like six months you can you, you guys can use finrep you should use finrep and they're like yeah, yeah yeah i'll get around to it and it's like it's only the last couple of weeks that they're like oh i'm using finrep mm -hmm. so i haven't been getting any calls from my my dad's one of, my dad's a boomer and i i used to get calls he he'll he like his mate oh my son knows all about crypto you should speak to him um i haven't been getting any of those calls yet like i think we're still pretty early mm. i also think that, that what is objectively happening is that the indicator you've got on the bottom of your chart is volatility kicking up so volatility is roughly twice what it was like not long ago at, at october so what that means is that both our upside is twice as big in a normal day and our downside is twice as big in a normal day. If you change that to a daily chart, man. So we're starting to see like, like you can just, you can just eyeball it. Look at like the first leg up. It was very, very like, like, like from the breakout, it was very, very steady, smooth, small candles, like like steady march up, no problems, emotionally very easy to hold. Whereas now you're starting to see like giant big daily wick candles, giant big daily ranges. It's starting to become emotionally difficult to hold, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Emotional difficulty is what you want to see as a long trader. What you don't want to see is everyone like having such an easy time of it that like you don't want to see everyone uh, you don't want to see everyone like like this is so easy i could quit my job and do this like that's usually the end right mm -hmm. yeah um Peak. look i think we're you know if we were going from if we we're going from one to ten 
I think the classical form of a bull market is disbelief and then into hope. I think we're definitely out of disbelief. I think the first leg up was disbelief, like, oh, maybe it's just going to fizzle out. I think everyone is I think everyone is into hope right now, right? So I think when hope becomes certainty, we will probably have a little scare the hose moment. And we'll probably have lots more scare the hose moments along the way out. Um typically people give a lot of money back at the end of this rally. So, so at the end of this rally, I'm going to do, uh, when, when I think we're at the end of this rally, I'm going to do something which is going to be very, very unpopular with, with you all. And you're all going to bitch about it. And I'm not going to give a fuck. Um, Hex is a scam and Pulse is a scam, dude. Wash your brain out with soap if you think any different. They're down 99.9999999%. And the founder is a fucking fraud. And I know the founder personally. I've known him for, I've known him since 1999 um, when we were both on the 200 biggest e email spammers of all time list and we were both running huge amounts of email spam out of Cabo San Lucas in Mexico um, running our own microwave links back into the US and he is as shady a guy as you will ever meet so don't leave any of your money in X that's just dumb so and I'm sugarcoating it too like I know a bunch of people who know Richard Hart and none of them trusted him enough to invest in his, his ICO so the people who know him best think he's a career comment that's just the truth of it. Um, yeah, honest, honestly, like you're just going to lose all your money if you put shit in it. Okay, so so where was I in? So the, what I'm going to do at the end of this rally, which might be a month, it might be three months, it might be four months, there's no real way to tell. When it reaches a crescendo of stupidity, and we're going to know that, I'll, I'll, um, we, we're going to know that because people's timeframes are going to get shorter and shorter. Typically, uh, the most money is made right at the end. Like, you think we're making a lot of money now? Like, honestly, we're just getting started. Like, like right at the end of this leg of the rally. We've probably got two more legs to go, right? Mm -hmm. At least two, sometimes three. Mm -hmm. But, at the, but the, the very treacherous time to trade is, is between the second leg and the third leg up of a, of a bull market. That is a very, very difficult trading. And we're actually just going to take a month off. And you guys are going to bitch about it for sure. Like you guys are really going to bitch about it. Um, because at that stage, you're going to be making a shitload of money. You're going to be having fun. You're going to want more action. And I'm going to be telling you just to take the month off. We're better off just we're better off just taking the month off and, and, and coming back. Um, so... Um, Sorry, Ian, like, like, do you want to keep going with, with what you've got? And any coins that are on your radar that might not be on mine? Um, uh, no, not immediately. Not not with the shorter ones. I have got a stink bid in on um, uni, because I think that uni is going uh, to yeah. retest um, from, from, from where it was. It's just um, did you see the stink bids got filled on Woo overnight? Today, no, I haven't had a look at. I haven't had a look at that yet. Yeah, I'm oh, not, not all the way where we thought, but but stink bids immediate pop. We was the biggest gainer today. Um, Woo. So you, you see that that little drop in the current in the current daily candle, uh, and then it hit it hit the breakout level, and then just just bam, it's like a fifteen percent update today. Um, this is clearly one of the big winning coins this cycle. And the, the biggest gainers today, Wu, Sol, and Phil, FIL. Let's just take a quick look at that. Uh, which one was that, sorry? FIL. Oh, Phil, yeah, this is nice. Look at that. Oh, beauty. Fucking lovely. Ooh. Lovely, lovely, Good. lovely. What are you doing? There we go. Um. Okay, so the lesson here, and... I think this is I think this is what you guys gotta gotta take in is you should be fully invested here. You should have a portfolio of stuff and you shouldn't be fucking with it too much. You should mainly be in the strongest coins, which are um do you mind if I share my screen, dude? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Um 
Let's look at a trading view. Um, FTM's breaking up today. I wouldn't mind grabbing some of this. Quick. That's a one hour chart and it's showing big signs of manipulation too. Um, and if you look at this, this is an absolutely hated coin that is all of a sudden playing catch up that just just hit its number. Like it just hit its, its breakout time. This one could do a really big, really quick catch up. So this is one I'm interested in too. Um, let's start with the bad news first. BSV has been fucking with me. Um, it's undergoing a short squeeze, badly underwater. At least I'm hedged with Bitcoin. So anyone, um, I, I think that's the end of the short squeeze. I think it's going to retrace a little, but we're in a bull market and it's a shitty coin and it might just it, it, it might just keep running away with us. I can't rule that out. I might have got this really wrong. So if you want to hold this, and I, I suggest holding it in the way that I'm holding it, which is short BSV long Bitcoin. Now, I have been short BSV long Bitcoin since here in massive profit. All that profit got wiped out in one day. Um, I think we're going to start, that's the end of the squeeze, but it's still not a very comfortable trade. If this is stressing you out in any way, shape or form, immediately reduce half your position and then reduce it again if it's stressing you out even more. I'm going to stay in this one, but I'm going to reduce it a bit. Um, let's just run through our, the trades that we've got now. Silo. Perry's asking if you can just put the uh, ATR indicator on. Sure can. Let me just stop this for a again. Um, actually, before I do that, let's... Let's go back to... Where this gets really slow on. Come on. So th this recent run from the 26th of February when alt season really started, let's see what's cracking since since the 26th of February. And this is how you do it. You get a a bunch of shit. Okay. Doge clearly winning, and this is dragging all these other meme coins up. Um, I think as much as I missed this one, um, we got to take a close look at Doge. But look at what else is up the top. Phil, Sol, um, where is Wu? And Wu, you can see just climbing out. This is all a bit distorted because Doge has, has come from behind. I think Doge is going to become a standout winner here. Like people love memes. It's going on Robin Hood. Retail's going to catch up with it and they're going to and, and they're going to want to get some Doge. Um as as stupid as all that sounds. All right. So let's run through it. So Bitcoin, you can see we had a potential spot that it could have turned down. And I saw in the group last night people were talking about, oh, it's another flash crash. I mean you know, they were talking about it, about this candle here. And I told you last night that that that's not a flash crash. A flash crash is something that's actually scary. Um, we are seeing at the highs, big outside bar, which is people cashing profits, longs getting fucked and shorts getting fucked. Um, this could go either way. To, to be honest, it could it could paint a, a little flash crash here and then go up. Um, we'll see how we go. I wouldn't get out on any flash crash. The the Bitcoin weakness translated into big time weakness in the alts, like like CLO was down here and then rebounded to there. This is fine. This is all like just you can see what that looked like in a one hour chart. This is all totally fine. If we get more weakness in Bitcoin, we're going to get more weakness in in CLO. INJ. Same thing, flirting with breakout levels. That's going to get there. Kudos, same thing, might get a little bit more, might not. 
what I would want to get out of Kudos is a big fuck off boner candle. Until we get that, this is just this steady march up, and you can see these. What am I doing? Sorry, I'm on airport hotel Wi Fi. These sort of bits here and here shake everyone out, shake the weakest guys out. Every time, every time weak guys get shaken out, it sort of extends the potential of this thing a little bit. So while it's doing this stuff, this is exactly what you want to see. Okay, Sui, shakeout, second shakeout. This one's ready to go. Pendle, broke to highs, closed above the highs, shaking people out, totally normal. This one's off to the races. BSV, we've already covered. Near. We said that if it hit here, it's going to squeeze some people out, squeeze some shorts out. Hits here, it's going to squeeze some more out, going to squeeze to here. And then once it gets past here, it's flirting with that level. We're ready to pump this one. Near is very, very good. SEI, same basic deal. Um, you know, the more of this sideways shit that we get, the, the readier it is to go. CFX, couldn't ask for a better chart. You know, this one's going to send all the way to here and beyond. Um, I think it'll get to here um, and beyond. Uh, and what should you expect? You should expect the end of it to be giant fuck-off candles. That, and we're not seeing anything like giant fuck-off candles. So there's no reason to get out. Why are we looking for giant fuck off candles? Because if you think it's not because the chart pattern means anything, it's just because giant big candles with no retrace indicate people FOMOing into the coin. People FOMOing into the coin are almost by definition paying too much for the coin. People by definition paying too much for the coin creates an exhaustion of potential buyers. So it means that all the buyers are bought, which means that we're, we're sort of mechanically bound to have at least some retrace. So I, I think this one is one of our most promising looking positions. Um, Vertex still looks great to me. It hasn't had its moment in the sun yet. It's, I mean, we bought it here and it's tripled. So like, I can't really fucking complain. Um, I think it's going to be way above here at some point. I think that might take a while though. Ape, having a moment in the sun. Um, you can see we've got this beautiful points all the way here, 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 here. That that this could just run and run and run, probably on the back of other other meme coins like Doge, Solana. Wrote to all, to all time highs, confirmed it. Hammer candle, ready to rock. Um, look at a monthly chart we can reasonably expect 250 bucks out of this pitch and and some you know if we get a full cycle we're looking at 500 to a thousand um be very happy with that phb um daily chart beautiful all of these shakeouts very constructive we're above all-time highs Shaking out the weak little bitches. This one's going to bang. Looks really nice. Um, BNB, boy, couldn't get a better chart than that, right? Just a steady and steady, smooth march up and climb. And if we look at a monthly chart, it's going to get to 700 bucks. It's mines of Darwinia, Darwinia, whatever the bullshit it is. Um, a little bit below entry, uh, no, a little bit above entry price now. Um, pretty constructive with this last shakeout. This one's fine. I'm holding this one. IMX, nice sideways kind of kind of a thing here. This is all cool. We're at, you know, we're at all time high prices. There's oh no, we're not. Um, yeah, I think I think this one looks really good. Ondo still looks great. Abs I mean, we got in here. Absolutely no reason to sell it. Um, absolutely no reason to sell it. I dumped out of my last Arkham um, yesterday. No, three days ago. 
I dumped out of my Occam and, and, and shouted in <laughs> Retadia. Okay, so let's cover how to buy these stupid fucking things without getting ripped off. The way to not get ripped off is to is to find them on deck screener. Um, this is a one hour chart. This is a daily chart. We bought it here. I paid seven, seven, I think. I overpaid. But it's a three X in three days. No, it's, no, it's four X in three days. Um, I bought let's have a look. Um, can you see my phantom wallet coming yeah, up? Yeah, it's firing up now. Yep. I mean, I've got a small fucking car worth of this dumbass thing. Um, it's a $20 million market cap coin. There's absolutely no reason it can't be a $200 million market cap coin. Um, the memes on this coin are absolutely lit. Uh, it's being shilled heavily all over Twitter. Um, it's got a great name. Like, like I know how dumb that sounds, but, but like, we're in a dumb stage. You've got to adjust yourself to the dumb the dumb times, right? Um, I think I'm going to buy more of this. I really do. Um, while we're at it, let's look at Mia, which is the other one we've got. This is on the Blast Network, which is kind of a cunty thing because it takes you 14 days to get your money out of out of it. Um, it's about where I bought it. Market cap, 7 million bucks. Um, I think I bought it here. So it's about where we bought it. Um, I think this one's still okay. Um, the thesis here is that uh, um, there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of money that's trapped on Blast Network. It takes 14 days to get your money out of. So my, my thesis is that people, if the market starts to move, people who have their money on Blast are going to want something degenerate to, to, to bet on rather than wait 14 days to get their money out. And this is the most degenerate culture coin, meme coin on, on Blast. So that's the that's the thesis. Um, the other shitty one we've got from, from ages ago is Ninja, which hasn't done much. It's about where we bought it. I think I bought it from for one and a half cents. It's 0.13 cents. Uh, it's a third, it's the it's the doge of INJ, basically. The whiff of INJ. It's ninja with dog whiff nunchucks or, or something stupid like that. Let's have a look at the chart. Um, I've held this one for a couple of months now. Mm, that doesn't appear to be loading. Anyway, let's move on. Oh, oh no, actually, let's go back to deck screen and let me show you how to buy these things without um without getting fucked. So the first thing you need to buy Solana coins is you need a Solana wallet. And let's do it from the start. So there's in any of these coins, there's a bunch of fake, there's a bunch of fake whatever coins. Like whatever the name is, someone will create a coin with the same name to try and trick you into buying it. Big scam, common scam, 100% chance you're going to run across this scam. So you've got to be very careful. So what you do is, first of all, you click, you go to Deck Screener, because their links are always legit, and you click on Trade on Radium, and it opens up this little window. Can you see the window loading here? It is just opening, yeah. Okay. So you see this is the contract here. It's it's not the name. It's like 600ZGH or whatever. You need to connect your wallet. So you click on Connect Wallet. It'll say which wallet you want to connect. You need MetaMask, Phantom. I've got both MetaMask and Phantom or, or Wallet Connect apparently is good. You can connect the hardware wallet. Um, but the trick is you need to buy these fuckers with Solana. So what you do is you go to your sex you, or, or wherever you bought your Solana and you transfer your Solana to it. So let me, sh actually, let me connect my wallet. I'll connect Phantom. Are we connected? And then you, you click on your wallet. You can see my wallet here, right? Yep. Click 
click on receive, click on Solana, copy that. Now you go to your centralized exchange or wherever you've got, or your Solana wallet or wherever you've got it, and you send it to this address. There's no delay. It shows up after like 10 seconds. And then you can swap Solana for this thing. And let's do... Is it connecting? I think it's just crap out because it because zooms on. Um, but anyway, you uh, you choose your thing. You don't with these things. You don't want to do them in big chunks. You want to do it a couple of grand at a time. That's basically what you want to do. Um, especially with smaller stuff, we're talking about a, we're talking about very very small coins here. So you can move the market quite a lot by yourself. So don't do that. Um, everyone got that? Any questions on that? That's great. Just say, hey, Jennifer, no, it's not too late to buy the retard IO. That's what Scott's doing now. I'm probably going to Yeah, I'm going to buy some more. I'm going to buy some more today. That. Yeah. If you're in a winning position, you don't, you like, you've got to be okay with topping that position up. And like, if Scott's saying, I'm going to buy more, and I'm saying, I'm going to buy more, it's a good time. So uh, let's dig into that a little bit again. So, we only have so much that we can hold in our tiny little brains. Like we want some big coins right now. Memes are pumping. We want some memes. We've, we probably want some, some ETH as well and probably some Bitcoin as well. You don't want to get like, you don't want to end up with a hundred coins in your wallet. Like it's just too hard unless you're doing it like you and I are doing it. Like we're basically full-time, right? Mm -hmm. Not full-time. I like, I'm not basically like I am. I'm beyond full-time. Most people aren't like that. If that's if if you're here going, yeah, I want to check it once. I want to check it once a day uh, or every couple of days. Some FIL, some Woo, some Solana, maybe a couple of others. Some mid cap ones that you like, small ones like CFX, like Celo, like Kudos, maybe an AI coin, and then and and then some little tiny shitters that are just basically completely worthless scams that you're hoping that other people pump so that you can sell to them, right? Just yeah. a little bit. Absolutely. So, and I was just going to say, keep keep your, whatever you're going to bet, like if you go all in with everything you've got on one coin, well, that's great if you're going to sit and ride out like the entire cycle. But you'd be surprised, like if you put $100 on a coin, like if you put a hundred bucks on that retardo, you probably have close to three hundred bucks now. Like this oh, no, shit. More, more than that. Yeah, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't put much on, and and I've got like twenty grand there now. So exactly. I mean, exactly. I, and and it might ten x again, and that's a house, right? Like, mm -hmm. like I mean, the, and okay, so let's dig in a little bit to why this happens. This doesn't happen because these coins are better than the other coins. In fact, they're a lot worse. This happens because it's an absolute cunt to get your money onto those stupid exchanges and an absolute cunt to get it back out. Like if you think it's easy, to get if you think it's hard getting it in, try getting it back out. Like it's fucked. Um, and so because of that, that's an extra friction, which means people are much more inclined to take the profits they make and dump them into, into more things that are like a similar but riskier version of the same thing. So what we're seeing, why is Retardio pumping? Retardio is pumping because dog with hat is the Solana coin that pumped first. And, and guys have made like eight figure wealth off a thousand. There's a guy who put in a thousand bucks. He's worth like $10 million now, right? And the thing you really need to understand is that this is the beating heart and soul of crypto. Like the reason you guys all joined the 100X coin club isn't because you wanted to make like FinRev style stable and smooth profits. The reason you all joined was because you really like this this idea that you can throw in a couple of grand and end up a millionaire if you get it right. That and whenever that starts to happen, and it's fucking happening, right? Mm -hmm. Like a dude put a thousand dollars into WIF and he's worth ten million bucks, thirteen actually. Like whenever that starts to happen, there's nothing that's not exciting about that. There's nothing that's not like, holy fuck, he's not smart. He didn't put a lot of research into it it's literally just a dog with a fucking hat like like 
and and the rationale for the coin is is our dog with a hat is cuter than sheep. That's the whole thing. There we go. There we go. And and what's the thesis for retardio? That guys are going to find it harder to pull their money out of dog with hat, and will find it easier, or they think they've missed dog with hat because it's already worth a billion dollars, and they'll throw it into the next best thing. And that's what we saw with cock in you. It's why Sheba pumped after Doge pumped. You know, it's this is something that we see again and again. Oh, I've missed that one, but maybe I can get this one. That's the retardio thesis. And 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 what's behind retardio? A cool name and some memes. Hmm. Fucking nothing. Like literally nothing. So a positive. There's a cap hat too. There's there's all these dumb things, and they're all competing with. So the other side of this is stop thinking about market cap and start thinking about mind share. Like in terms of like the beating heart and soul of crypto is on Twitter. So you all should be on Twitter, on crypto Twitter. Um, because that's like, it's like the equivalent of, of the Paris catwalks for fashion, right? Like that's like that's that's where trends get set. That's where new stuff gets, that's where the cool kids figure out their shit. Um, It smells right to me. Um, okay, so let's look at some questions. Let me go back a bit. Perry, Scott, we never want to transfer from a sex to another exchange directly. Um, I don't know. I do all the time. All the time. Um, Andrew S., rather than the shit coins, do you look for any real quality new projects with 100x potential? No, never. Uh, <laughs> No, never. Um, you think the reason people do their fundamental research is because they think that they can have some control over this process, but it's really just luck and these things catch fire. I, my preference, my strong preference is to wait for when they start attracting, when they start catching fire and start attracting mind share. When, they, when people start talking about them, when people start talking about them and, and start, and they start going viral, that's usually a precursor to people starting to buy them. Um, does it make more sense to take bigger bets or more tickets if the capital is limited? Miles, phenomenal question. Okay, it's like this. If you are starting with a smaller stack, you have to take concentrated bets. You don't necessarily want to take the concentrated bets all in the riskiest assets because that's too hard. But you definitely, if you are starting with, if you are starting with a five thousand dollars stack, I would take, I would keep it to five times one thousand dollars investments. Keep it simple. Um, if you're starting with twenty or thirty thousand dollars, well, you can spread it around a bit more. Can you share where we can trade altcoins with leverage here in the U.S.? Hyperliquid.xyz. Let me show you my Hyperliquid.xyz account. Um, where's Share my screen. All right, let's go hyperliquid. Let's look at my positions. This is a DEX, it's completely distributed. Um, these are my positions. You can see I'm taking it right in the arse on BSV. Um, I have it hedged with spot. SEI, I'm badly underwater. INJ, I'm a little bit underwater. And SUI, I'm a little bit underwater. Overall, I'm at 113 grand, started with 10, and let's look at how I've been doing over time. Over the last seven days, I am up 28 grand all time. I'm up 85 plus my own, up 90 plus uh, plus some, some trades that are open. Um, this is a really good exchange. Ian, do you use this one? Yeah, I use this all the time. Honestly, it is a it's just easy to use. It's really dope, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's really dope. We were on it right from the start when there was only a handful of users. It's really fucking good. Mm -hmm. Funding is starting to get a little bit crazy on some of these coins, right? Hmm. Oh. Let's look at dog we've had. So the funding, if you want to borrow, is you've got to pay 720% per annum 
to borrow dog with hat. But look at that chart. Like, fuck yeah. Like, that's amazing. From 11 cents to a buck 68, not very long. Now, what, what we are seeing in the rest of the meme coin market is I couldn't justify buying dog with hat at this kind of valuation. But I can justify buying Retardio. Retardio at at a fifth of well at a tenth of this valuation is still a 10x. And I'm happy with the 10x. Um, more questions. Gia, I don't know. I'd, I wouldn't buy crypto with a credit card because you're going to pay like a bunch of fees and spreads and shit like that. That's always a, um, you're, you're generally, the people who, who are selling your crypto through credit cards are always going to fuck you on the spreads and you're going to end up paying roughly five or 7% more. If you go through life paying 7% on the top before you trade, um, yeah, yeah, it, it's a, it's swimming against the tide, man. Paul, you are full time Scott plus half the night. Um, I don't sleep very well, um, especially since I gave up smoking weed. Um, so I I tend to wake up at two in the morning and check the markets for an hour and then go back to bed. Mike up hundred percent on Sheep. Good, love to see it, man. Let me show you something cool. We we traded Sheep the last cycle, Ian and I. Come on. Come on, word. So it's just going to take a minute to load. Just while that's loading up, um, a few different questions about leverage. So I'm sure. just trying to think of different ways to explain leverage. And my 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 latest attempt is think of leverage as borrowing money from the biggest, baddest fucking debt collector in the world who will, without fail, always come and collect. So leverage is basically borrowing money. So if you were to, say, do 10x leverage on something, well, then you're you're borrowing 10x worth of something that, that doesn't exist, and you have to pay that back. So You also have to pay the funding rate. You also have to pay the funding rate. And if we, now we wouldn't even really need, like if we had a flash crash, that's when you can find yourself totally wiped out if you're over leveraged, okay? Yeah. So, so if you have a if you have 5-1 leverage and you get a 20% dip in your account, you're out of the game. Yeah. Yeah. If you get, that's just, that's just the way it is. So five is the absolute maximum that you can ever go to and we can see what am i at right now i'm at 4.92 which is as much as i'll ever go to right mm -hmm. okay that's um now this is the trade that ian and i had on last sheep cycle we bought it here we sold it at the close of this day here and i've left this line on my chart i'll never take it off because beautiful Yeah, you guys are bragging now, but we sold here. Never, ever bag hold a coin. No. And I made $331,000 on this trade. It was a lot. This was a life changing trade for me. That is a thing of beauty. It's a happy day. It's a happy day. Um, Robert, how are you picking the shitters? <laughs> yeah, there's no real method to it, it's 100% vibes based. Um, I'm 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 plugged into a bunch of influential people on Twitter, and uh, um, and I see what I see what they uh, I see what they're talking about. Paul, yeah, you get out the same way via radium. A rep at your IRA told me one client put 500k on sold back last October. That's amazing. Woo, okay. Got into Balkan Dwarf yesterday. I don't even know what that is, John, but it sounds crazy. Um, uh, I don't know what, uh, Rich, uh, about thought.ai. Let's have a look at the chart. 
Mm, no, that's not. It's it's too small to even be on a chart. Let's have a look. Yeah, can't find it, Rich. Um, I, it seems like that's a coin so small that uh, Andrew S. Do you have some hate for Titan X? No, I don't know anything about it, dude. I never heard of it. Um, there's thousands of these coins. Okay, Mike. Let's do once again the steps to buy Retardio. All right. So you go to DexScreamer.com, search for Retardio. There's a reasonable amount of liquidity on this coin now. You can buy, like when I first bought this, I got slipped buying a thousand bucks worth. Now you can now you can sell 645 grand worth of it here. So you go here and you go down on the right-hand side First of all, you want to add it to your watch list. These things you want to buy on breakouts. So, you, so the ideal place to buy is here. So you want to add an alert and, and add a breakout. You don't want to just buy them just in case they work. Like that's kind of a dumbass thing to do. Fuck, I'm going to buy some more of this thing. This is going to jam so fucking hard. Okay, and then this button here, trade on radium. Radium is a DEX. Now, you don't want to go straight to Radium. You want to always do it from within Dex Screener because it sort of guarantees that you won't get fucked. Now we're swapping from Solana to here. You need to connect your wallet. You click connect your wallet, and that'll bring up a wallet. Your wallet is like this. You can, you can to, to work out where to send, you need to trade Solana for this shitter because this is a Solana Dex. For example, um, each chain has its own dex like the two dexes for solana are jup and radium um so here we want to go receive we're going to choose solana and we're going to copy this we're going to copy this and we're going to send some solana coins to this address now if you're weird about this and this gives me incredible anxiety to do every time i send like 10 bucks worth first just to make sure i'm not getting fucked that's a really nice thing to do is to just send 10 bucks worth and not get fucked. And then, and then once you do that, send a bit more. Once you've got your Solana in your wallet, you can, you can go to here and you can click however many Solana you want to swap. So you want to start off swapping one Solana for this. So let's start. So, so let me see if I can connect my wallet. See if it'll connect. It doesn't like connecting while Zoom's on. And let's do a little bit. Are we connecting? I don't think it's going to collect, connect while Zoom's on. But anyway, you start off by start off by swapping like a half a Solana, like 50 bucks worth, and then see if it goes through. If it goes through, you're all good. Now, there's, a, there's one other thing that you might need to know. On the settings here, you can have your slippage tolerance. 0.3% is normal. If you're willing to if you're willing to have a bit more, if you're getting your, 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 coin, your offers rejected, up it to 0.5, don't up it over that. And you get that from settings down here. Okay, is that clear? Um, who are the kids, cool kids on Twitter? For Solana, uh, the, the 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 central guy for Solana shitters is a guy called Black Noise B L K N O I Z O six on Twitter. Let me let me find him. His name is Anson. And you and uh, other guys that I like on uh, other guys that I like on Twitter are. Uh, a buddy of mine, Grant Blockmates. Um, the Blockmates crew, they have some really good 
really good content. I've got a number of like winning coins off them. Who else do I follow on Twitter? My buddy Antoine, who comes on here every now and again, um, handsome finance. Vilma, um, John, Scott, what do you think about the Trump meme coin? I think that's probably going to jam, dude. I think that's, I think that's potentially, uh, let's have a look at the chat. That's a really, really good. I mean, that's a beautiful chart. Memes are having a moment. It's an obvious one. Um, Vilma, yeah, ask away, bro. Um, we can open up the mic to him if you want. Um, yeah, let's take a look at FinRev while we're here. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> FinRev said, let me bang, bro. And we went, okay, bang away. One sec, let me see. Uh, All right, Charles in man, FinRev really, really is jamming. Yeah, I'll, sh I'll show it at a fairly conservative bull target. John W up 32% since the 8th of January. Stephen Johnson, FinRev, FinRev ass kicking ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> Any enhancements for FinRev soon? Yep, yeah, we, we will make announcements. We are excited for what is in the pipeline. Oh, boy, we've got some cool shit. Holy shit. Um, James has found this amazing thing for the entry algo. So you can see it's just like like we told you here, it was the perfect time to get in, and it's just on a tear. Like, it's just like, as long as we have alt season, this is just going to go vertical. Um, volatility in general is good for FinRev. So we can expect the profits to not only continue, but to accelerate from here. Now, this is still fairly pedestrian compared to say what you can get if like off a meme coin, if it hits the jackpot, right? But it's also like very, very stable and smooth. You can see that it's, this is nothing like the anxiety inducing kind of thing that you that some of you guys are, are, are getting. It's just like stable and smooth. And let's look at the portfolio at the moment. Um, actually, I'm just... asking a great question about how does FinRev lock in profits when we're buzzing and flying like this? Uh, let me explain. Okay, you can see we have no short trades at all. TRX, ETH, BNB, and NEO. NEO is one that we got to look at, actually. Dinosaur coin starting to jam just broke out from like my great friend Andrew, who some of you will meet. He bought this at 20 cents when it was still called Ant Shares or some shit like that. And it got to 200 bucks in 2018 and he didn't sell and he bag held it all the way down. Looks like it's ready to go again. Um, let's go back to FinRev. Okay. Biggest positions, TRX, ETH. Let's have a look. So I'll show you how... I'll show you how FinRev banks profits. Okay, this is our forecast down here. When that forecast goes up, we add a little bit more to the position. When the forecast goes down, we take a little bit off. So we're constantly either adding a little bit or taking a bit off or adding a little bit or taking a bit off. And, and so we're just playing around the edges. Like we're, we're not jumping all in and all out of that coin. So our forecast here is 11.29. An average long position is 10. A max long position is 20. Um, so if we look at what we're doing on any day to day, you can see today, this is a $130,000 account. And we're buying a couple of hundred bucks worth of Bitcoin, a couple hundred bucks worth of XRP, selling six times 34, selling 200 bucks worth of Ethereum Classic. Sorry, I'm on dodgy airport Wi-Fi net. Um, 
selling a little bit of Shiba, selling a little bit of polka dot, adding a little bit of BNB. So it, it's, you know, for example, here, Matic, we're buying 630 bucks worth, right? Solana, we're buying six Solana, so a thousand, a thousand of um, 900 bucks worth. You know, so so every day we're buying or selling just a little bit. So the advantage of using this instead of like stop losses and targets is that if the coin starts going back down, we're just selling a little bit as soon as it starts to go down. We're not waiting until it crosses an arbitrary line before we get out. And so this is much, much more efficient. So this is why, um, th this is the way that like professional firms do things. And this is why everything's just so much smoother and just gentler and easier to live with. Whereas if you look at, say, if we compare this to my own my own trading, let's look at my own performance. Like in the last week, this has been up and down all over the place, right? Like I made 20 grand on this account. And if we look at it since November when we started, I've had some, like overall, I'm trading, I'm trading the house down, right? Like I'm trading really, really fucking well. Um, we started off with 10 grand. I fucked around with two grand, lost some, put 10 grand in. We've turned that 10 grand into 120 grand. That's pretty good. But we've had big swings, you know, like like huge monstrous swings. Um, FinRev will never do that. Sure, you can make a deposit for FinRev. Just talk to the onboarding team. Um, what vol rate do I recommend? Ordinarily, I don't recommend going beyond 45%. But right now, I think you could go a little bit higher than that. Ian, um, what degenerate fucking bullshit are you doing? I got um, a number of FinRev accounts. So I have one account on 50% that's just 10 years. And then I've got uh, another account where I throw in just like a thousand bucks and I've got it on 90% um, volatility. And I've done 80% on that in the last couple of weeks. So with it compound. Would you mind if I show would you mind if I showed the guys your account? Is no, that violating your oh, yeah. Yeah. it's share the screen? Oh no, no, I can. I get, you want to share your screen? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, that's right. I was just going to show inside the um the bit get. I can log into the FinRev. Just give me. I I, I can find it. It's uh second FinRev Hampshire. That's, that's the one. That's the oh, one. Yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. Let me bang, bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you shoved $1,016 in on the 3rd of January. And you can see you ex when you trade at too high a volatility target, and, and what Ian's doing here is mathematically illiterate, right? Like it's in the long run, like if you traded this for 20 years, you would definitely underperform me. But in the short term, if you get lucky, you can really outperform. So whereas I've done, what, 40% in the last couple of months, mm -hmm. you've gone from 1000 bucks to seventeen twenty nine today. Um, and I'm confident this will be like five grand by the time alt season is over, right? Mm -hmm. Probably more, probably more. Um, I, I, let me show you, let me show you another one that's that's like even stupider. Like, let me show you like maximum stupidity. You're gonna love this one. This is the worst one we've we've allowed. Yeah, this is the dumbest shit in the world. Timon put in two hundred and twenty-five dollars. So two hundred and twenty-five. Experienced extreme volatility drag. Got down as low as until it started to take off, and then he went three fifty-four, four hundred, four fifty, 
500, 600, 2,000, 4,000, 5,000, 8,000. Then he came down as low as 7,900. And now he's cranked it up to 17,000. 200 bucks to 17,000. So this is FinRev, but run like a meme coin. This is basic. That's basically what FinRev, FinRev, it's FinRev run at the same volatility that a meme coin would run. Mm. <laughs> you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do this. I'm, He's got this at a hundred percent, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and you know, what's worse is when I fucking speak to him, he, he, this is the trading equivalent of I want to get across town faster, so I'm just going to run every red light. And then he's going to break his own record for getting across town and say, see, it worked. And I speak to this guy. I speak to him every day. And he's like, he just can't get it through his head that this is absolutely the wrong thing to do. He's like, but I've turned $200 into 17000 Why is that? How can that possibly be the wrong thing? And, you know, there's every chance that he's going to turn that $200 into like 200 grand before the shit's over, right? And he's going to become just in fucking toler tolerable about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I wouldn't do this, but, you know. All right, guys. Um, moving on, is there any more questions? Um, by the way, if you guys want to get FinRev or talk to the onboarding team, trade forward slash call. Um, what volume, what vol do I recommend? I recommend 45, 50%. At 60%, you're going to start to start to have bigger drawdowns in, in the bad times and pretty significant outperformance in the good times. 70% is getting a little bit stupid. Um, and 100%, well, we've seen what 100% looks like. Nice. Um, Jennifer, in one year, I expect it to double it. I expect to double more than double your investment at this stage if it stays like this. We doubled it in the bear market, so like, like we're going to more than double it in the bull market. Um, still holding Arkham Jaguar, wonderful trade, like, like hell of a trade. I think it's going up. Um, I also think the easy part of that trade is done, so I would have banked some of the profit by now. I'd bank half of the profit. Yep, Mark Wishingrad. If you've got if you've got the platinum, definitely take multiple accounts and throw a little, throw a, throw a couple of grand in a in a small one at a high vault target. Fuck yeah, that's a really smart way to play. Um, Perry, why ATR and not one of the many other volatility indicators? Uh, ATR is easier to one ATR percent is easier to understand. Like I like Finrev and and you know mathematical proper proper quant trading is based on standard deviation, um, but it's just. It, it's easier to understand the average um, average candle size that it moves in a day rather than the distribution of standard deviation of returns. Um, it's just intuitively easier to like I fuck it and go, oh yeah, oh, it's moving 3% in a normal day. I know what that means. If I look at a standard deviation of whatever, then intuitively my brain has to chew on it. So it's just a bit harder to... to Absolutely. So for FinRev, you have uh, an onboarding call with a crypto coach, somebody that really knows crypto, and they'll be able to help you get on the exchange. They'll be able to help you. You know, if you are right at that point of, I don't even have a way to change fiat into crypto, then the coaches can uh, can help you with that. And with the API connection, it's very, very quick and easy, and they're very good at what they do. Um, let's quickly look at Ondo. Okay, first thing I want you to notice is that it's very close to all-time highs. We haven't got any of that like last cycle bullshit where there's a bunch of bag holders waiting to get their money back. Everybody is very happy with a coin that's at all-time highs. A coin that's at all-time highs has an extremely high probability of continuing to make all-time highs. That's just the way it is. Why? Because I don't want, like I own Ondo. I've got 42 grand worth of Ondo. I'm not selling it. It's going up. When will I sell it? When it starts going down. As long as this broad, as long as you look at it 
and and it looks like this classic Dick and Bulls pattern. There's absolutely no reason to sell this coin. One of the oldest and worst trading mistakes is to sell a winner to buy a loser. You've got a winner. Absolutely no reason to get out of your winner. This thing is doing exactly what it should do. It's doing better than anyone could reasonably have expected it. You've got a lottery ticket in your pocket there. Don't fuck with it. Hands off the steering wheel. Um, that's what I think about Ondo. What would make me want to take some profits on Ondo? If we saw another candle that looked like this, one of these at the start of a move is very bullish. At the end of a move, it's probably going to go sideways for at least a month. So if you see a candle that looks like this, bank at least half on, on the close. And um, I'll show you why. So if we're going back to our classic sheep trade of all time, look at the candle that we exited on. It's going up, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. And then we have this fuck off candle where at the end it goes from 4,800 to 8,000 in a, uh, to 8,800 in a day. It doubles after already, after already making like a 20 X, it doubles in a day. This candle can only be caused by FOMO. Whenever you see FOMO, it's dumbasses. Whenever you see dumbasses, you generally in life want to do the opposite of what dumbasses are doing. Like that's just like a general principle in life. If you see people doing stupid shit, if you see stupid people, you probably don't want to hang around them and you probably don't want to do what they're doing. GRT looks amazing, by the way. Um, Dwayne, yeah, let's take a quick look at, at uh, FET and let's, let's do GRT. Amazing. Amazing. No reason to get out. Amazing. Like, Tia, Tia's a little bit weird. Um, I think Tia is going to have another go, but the problem is that Tia is already a $20 billion market cap. I think Tia has limited upside because it could be a 50, maybe a hundred billion dollars in a full cycle, but like really it's already a 20, like it's hard. Um, John, I've never heard of Penuel. Let's have a look. John, I think, you, wow, that's a great looking chart, dude. That's a phenomenal looking chart. I was about to say, in general, John, you need some bigger coins. You need to have at least some of your portfolio in some things that are like a bit more mainstream. Um, but that's fucking good. Cat with hat. Um, that's not a very good shot. I don't know. What are your current thoughts on SHIB? A lot more to go. Um, what's a good pick? Parker, are you looking for a, if you're looking for a big cap coin, um, if you're looking for a major, Solana, FIL, Wu, um, if you're looking for a mid cap coin um, or, or a major BNB, if you're looking for a mid cap coin, Ondo, Pendle, INJ, Sui, um, if you're looking for a small coin, uh, I think it's hard to go past Retardio. Oh, Pepe, Pepe looks pretty good. Um, Pepe looks great. Um, what are your current thoughts on SHIB? Um, I think it's going incredibly well. Um, tell us about DAR. I don't really know much about it. It's it, it, it's one of these Web3 gaming coins that, that Web3 gaming is having a little bit of a moment. Um, Bitcoin Cash, it'll be going up. So the way that you, you think of Bitcoin Cash is it's Bitcoin on steroids. It's like a cheap Walmart fucking copy of Bitcoin. I would steer clear of it, especially after this candle. I wouldn't want anything to do with it. Vault, never heard of it. Let's have a look, Ken. Okay, Vault Inu. It looks 
very thin. Let's see if we can find a better chart. Looks good, man. Um, VTRO, never heard of it. Let's have a look. You should sell that part if it's if it looks like that. If it looks like that in the current market. Um, Perry, anyone who tell anyone who claims to be able to predict the future is just lying. Like it's just not possible. Like all of this stuff that we're doing now is based on trend and momentum effects, and trend and momentum effects top about 12 days out. So the guy who's telling you it's going to do this into the halving and then it's going to do that and then it's going to do this and it's going to do that, like, he fucking doesn't know and he's lying to you. And if I start doing bullshit like that, tell me I'm lying because it's bullshit. Cubic. That is a very weird looking chart. Let's, have an, let's see if we can find another chart. Just an interesting thing about Doge for so Doge can be a way in for a lot of people, like first time crypto market people. They're chatting about it on um Reddit, they buy some Doge, Doge pumps, and then they think to themselves, fucking hell, this is all right, isn't it? And then they buy some other coins because they want to get that feeling again. So it's, that, a, it's a really important drug. point. And that they and you can get them on Robinhood. Um, okay, so Cat with hat, like, like, I mean, these things could work. Cubic looks too small to bet on. Um, guys, don't have too much of your portfolio in these small coins. Something like cat with hat or pokey, which I've never heard of. If you throw it into, if you throw it into trading view and you don't get a clear chart, it's probably shit. How about XRP? XRP is rubbish. Like, it's, it's, like like it's not rubbish because it's a bad coin or anything it's rubbish because of this let's have a look so this is let's go back to when the bull market started Which is you know, roughly here. XRP is way down the bottom. It's you know it's just objectively a loser. And I and I've noticed you've talked you you've asked several times about this. You're holding a loser, and what I strongly suspect is that your thinking is I can't sell it because I need to get my money back because I paid more for it. Completely irrelevant. Would you buy XRP today? No one would. Why? Because you'd rather hold something like this or this or this or or anything else that's actually going up. Um, this is a big, big mistake in trade. Uh, where can you buy Woo in US? Um, I don't know, lots of places. So how do you figure out where to buy a coin? You go, you, you Google coin gecko and then the coin name. So let's go coin gecko woo. And we'll go to markets, and these are the spot. Oh, sorry. This is wrong one. So okay, so you click on markets. I'll give you a list of all the places you can buy it. If you want spot markets, Bing, Bybit, KuCoin, Pancake Swap. You can get that from the US. Mex C, you can get from the US. Femex, I think you can get from the US. If you want, uh, if you want it on perpetuals, these ones, or you can get it on hyper liquid. Actually, um, okay. What else have we got here? How about Doge? Doge looks really good here. 
Andrew, there's absolutely no chance that Richard is going to win his case. He is absolutely a con man. It's not that I don't like him. It's that he's, he's, he's just ripped off millions and millions of people. And he sounds like he's ripped off you too. So when someone rips you off, you shouldn't hope he wins. You should hope he fucking gets cancer of the cock and it drop, turns black and it drops off in his hand. That's the way that I feel about the people who rip off other people. Like he's just a con man. Um, and if you can't see that, well, you know, it's Stockholm Syndrome, right? Um, CTSI, don't know anything about it. Track, don't know anything about it. Jasmine, let's take a quick look. It, um, very strong price action last time I looked. Amazing. Amazing. Um, FLR. Big concern about this. I'd probably sell half PNG. Not bad. Doge looks amazing. H bar looks amazing. Amazing. Oh, SXP. Amazing. Good for you, man. Good for you, Matthew. Um, Doge is good. Atom looks good. Looks great. About to break out. Looks good. Um, Pre-sale questions? No, not this cycle. That was a 2018 thing. Don't do it. Don't do it. Your, your odds of some pre-sale bullshit coming to fruition before this cycle is over is just like almost nothing. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, Dwayne, I probably wouldn't put your really small coins on the uh, uh, on the squiggle charts. There's technically a way to do it, but it's going to be on the scope of this call. Um, RFD looks okay. Certainly going up. No reason to sell it. CRO, um, it's probably going to be going up right now. Looks great. Do you think that Bitcoin will pump to 100K? I don't know anything about the future, man. I have a... The difference between me and a lot of other people is that I is that I have a very humble approach to my ability to predict the future. I don't think I've got it. I don't think I can predict the future. I don't think you can. I don't think anyone can. I think that's all cope. I think what we have here is that the market is going up right now. Uh, the sun is shining. We've got to make hay. Um, the sun is shining. We've got to make hay. Um, Dwayne, you could you could make your 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 spaghetti charts divide by divide by uh divide by e. So, for example, if I wanted to measure FET in ETH, you can make FET USDT divided by ETH USDT, and that would measure it in ETH. And that's a way to that's a way to build your spaghetti charts. Bonk, no. super strong. Um, we're, we're getting to the end of this, dude. I'm... We are, yeah. So a question that we're, that we're getting quite a lot. So just to front run it, I've got wallets that are full of shit coins from old cycles that are just, they, they're gone. That's it. Just like cut away, forget it. So the question is like, what should we do with the bags that we're holding from the old cycle? And like, my, my opinion is it's like, well, just keep on holding them and be a bag holder or cut your losses. It's like, if you're underwater from the last cycle, it's like, well, <laughs> kind of so be it. It's not nice, but you've got to like move on to the new coins, not be stuck with, oh, I'm just holding the bag from the last cycle. That probably wasn't really well explained, but I think it can really, well, it can just do your editing. Thinking about these bags that you're holding. What do you think, Scott? Just cut that shit loose. Yeah, unless it's unless you're down so bad that it's irrelevant, I would I would you know this is a big mistake. Like I see it with XRP holders all the time. What do you think about XRP? It's like same fucking thing I told you last week. It's a shit coin. It's not going up. Every week that you don't trade it for something good is costing you money. And the only reason you're not doing it is because you're afraid to book a loss. That's loser thinking. You gotta you gotta get rid of it. You gotta sell the losers and buy the winners. Why do you think FinRev works? Because it sells the fucking losers and it buys the fucking winners. 
you know, that's why it works. It doesn't work because we're predicting the future with a crystal ball. All it's doing, if you want to make money in this market, look at all the coins that you've got, sell all the ones that, that show you a loss and buy, buy more of all the ones that show you a profit. Mm -hmm. That's trading in a nutshell. Like that is like, if you do that, you will make money. If you don't do that, you're probably going to lose money. I just can't be any clearer than that. Don't hold losers. Absolutely. Losers, average losers. Losers, losers. Nice. It was like, um, like, like you said at the start of the call that at some point you're going to do something that people are not going to enjoy. You're going to tell us to take our hands off the wheel for a month. And... Yeah, remember the bitching I got on fucking last time I told people to go to get out. Remember the, the fucking the, bitching. I got the 26th I got of December. I got refund requests. It's nine fucking dollars you paid, cunt. Like you want it back? Fuck off. Like, yeah. like, like, this is outrageous. We were, we were promised picks. It's like, dude, the market's going down. I'm not making any picks this week. Like, fuck off. Yeah, that was the 26th of December. Yeah, and the yeah, because everything yeah. was buzzing. Everybody was, oh, this is all right, isn't it? Fucking hell. My, and my, then it was right. Like, we're selling everything, and it's like, what? That's My job here is to be the adult in the room and I'm going to take the bag of cocaine away right when the party's getting started. That's what I'm going to do. So just fair warning. Uh, okay. Perfect. All right. Listen, All right. Anything else, Ian? No, I think we're good. That was a really fun call. Thanks, everybody. All right. Be good, guys. Ta-da.